Hey guys, welcome back to Ken Cinema Sofa. If it's your first time here, I'm your brother Ken, a missionary of 15 years in Japan, one year in Korea. But this channel is all about exploring my other passion, awesome cinema. Look, what else is what else can I say? Dune Part Two. It's finally here. I took a long break. I'm coming back to it now, but two years ago when I started my channel. There were a few movies that really, really hit hard. I tackled early on. Even some people in the comments were like, man, you're a new channel. You're tackling this movie already? Dune, the first one, was a big one. That was a biggie for me. And I loved it. I loved that movie. It's something about it that I feel it, it, it really captures the essence and the, the, the nuance of a novel. That is hard to do. I, you know, how many times have we seen uh, people complaining and comments and, and, and uh, you know, uh, talking with friends about how a movie is just not as good as the book or not as good as the source material, whatever that may be. But man, Dune, it really hit it. And I think it's because it's so, it's such a detailed world. And the director, uh, Denis Villeneuve, Villeneuve, people got on me about that in the last uh, Dune that I did two years ago. But look, I think I got better. Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, he he captures the, the feel of a novel because novels don't always paint everything out for you, right? They're not like a movie structure per se, right? With a three act structure. A novel can go on and just, you know, for hundreds of pages and meander down a, a fever dream of the main character as he passes out on Mars. And, and so there were a lot of things in the first Dune that really, really were mysterious to me and felt like a novel, like an author's uh, just, you know, taking you on the ride of his uh, whatever odyssey he's on, especially with like the prophecies and how they would come to pass or not come to pass or come to pass in a way that we did not expect. One that I'll never forget was that whole fight in the desert uh, between, I'm forgetting even the main character's names, but the main character and a guy that he, he had a vision of this guy telling him that he would explain to him the ways of the desert. And so I thought he was going to be like this teacher and everything, but he ended up, well, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it. And then world building, man, there's a scene in the first movie where it towards the beginning, where as he's preparing to travel to this planet Arrakis, that there's a computer explaining to him in the background, the details and, and uh, the biology and flora and fauna of the planet. It's just, it's just so... Uh, it, just, it, it just has that feel to it. So I'm, I'm glad to be back in this world. I got my salmon and my, you know, uh, carrots and everything here. It's not Japanese per se. There's rice. Been, you eat rice every day here. Without further ado, let's get to it. Please consider subscribing. I'm a small channel trying to build it up. Let's build it together. Dune Part 2. Let's get it. Power over spice is power overall. Okay, we're getting right into it. Okay, that was before the <laughs> studio logo. Okay, wow. Mm, that's good. Got my phantom melon to go with it. Tastes real good with the salmon and carrots. The battle for Arrakis took everyone by surprise. There were no witnesses. The Harkonnen operation was perpetrated overnight without warning or declaration of war. By morning, the Atreides were no more. I'm remembering that now. That was so sad how that happened. And the Emperor said, Christopher Walken. Since that night, my father has not been the same. Nor have I. For I know he loved you, Blood Atreides, like a son. But my father has always been guided by the calculus of power. Man. So he loved him like a son and sent them to do this. To this guy is just floating. <laughs> well, how else is he going to get around? The dude is big. And I took a real hit to put this on yeah, the channel instead of watching it in the theater. I'm still gonna do that. Father is dead. Shouldn't you go back to the stars? Be with him? I'm afraid I won't have enough time to fix things before you're coming. Was he speaking to his sister in an embryonic state or or was this more visions and prophecy? Wow, what a view. 
so the mom is still around. Huh? Whoa. It's interesting how they come floating out. Is that the dude that they killed in the desert? Oh, that's a decoy. Gotta love the little details. That thing spinning in the back of his head. You know, I like this because that was very intelligent. Like, how many other movies would the bad guys not even have known that the worm was coming until the last moment, right? Oh, what is that? Oh, but, you know, once again, this is like, it has the feel that it's intelligently written, right? And it has source material, which is great. This is so weird. The way... <laughs> It's not like the normal hovering that you would expect. So I'm saying little details like that. It's world building. I wonder, like, on this planet, how many times an eclipse happens. Oh! Whoa. That's right, he did, He he's practiced a lot. I remember the scene of him practicing with the, like, force field. Way to go, mom, come in in a clutch. You okay? Yeah. How about her? She's fine. Oh, okay, is she pregnant? Oh. Oh no, we are in the deep desert. <laughs> Only Fremen can survive here. They were here for us, not for you. I'm taking you somewhere they will never find us. Wow. Dude. Who are they taking out? Filthy water. It's full of chemicals, but good enough for cooling systems. <laughs> Don't let it out. Don't let it out. Don't let it out. Don't let it out. Is that because they're on a desert planet and that's seen like as a waste? This does have the feel of a uh, of a David Lean film, you know, like Lawrence of Arabia. And I have the feel that what's that guy's name? The one that played the killer in No Country for Old Men. What's his name? Uh, anyway, he feels like to me like he would be Alda. If you've ever seen, oh snap! Woo! That's you know seeing those things, those worms like that puts like the fear of God in you. You know, like something that is like not simply terrifying, but that is beyond you. And I think so. Is this like a Fremen city? Control the whole planet. Yeah, that's the only half of it. Whoa. Maybe that was his way of giving the other guy some rest, right? Man. Is that guy, I've never read the novels. If any of you are watching this and you've read the novels, is that character really like that in the books or is that just Dave Bautista? I thought he was trying to get some food out of his mouth. <laughs> Cause I, I do that. He thinks you're spies. So not a husky. How do you He said I got that. What's that actor's name? I refuse to look it up. So the Fremen look to be not so much a race as a confederacy of people. Okay, so that that must be the guy. That he dueled, yeah, Jam Jamis, yeah. You killed Jamis, right, now I remember. So this is happening not long after the end of the movie, the first movie. I thought that there would be some, you know, distance in time. Some of them, they, okay. Some of them do recognize that they feel that he is like their messiah figure. <laughs> Bye -bye.
It's interesting because when Jesus shows up in, on the scene, he was not someone that people expected to be a Messiah. He did not fill basically the, the parameters of what they expected the Messiah to be, right? Someone that would be a military leader, um, that would, you know, look perfect and, and otherworldly in his appearance, right? That would strike at the Roman Empire. I must slay the non-believers. Hmm. If they follow me, we can disrupt spice production. That's the only way I can get to the emperor. Your father believes I need a revenge. Hell, I do. So he does have that gift, though, right? He having a vision now. What is it? Her spice and the food. Oh, yes, I have a dream like that. So it doesn't seem like the the girls that were talking, I didn't see their eyes shining blue. So do they not have spice right now? I just remember it's just flashing in my eyes, my mind. Uh, the last time when he was fighting this guy and the guy was just like ah, ah. like what a performance i enjoyed this actor too in, in star trek uh strange new worlds which algorithm it's interesting it looks like uh i'm just getting the feel of like the uh, uh, hindu religion type setting ganges holy river thanks to the news I love, Jaiba, will change the face of our kids. It would have been back trees, it would have been back a green part, right? Wow. I never give your water away, not even for the test. Mm. Oh, I like that though. I like that, that once again, the way the culture reveals itself. It's so well written in detail, the way a culture grows on its own, right? Things and, and produces customs like this, like not even wasting the water from your eyes on a you know, desert planet. What if I would refuse? Then he's not living a life. And you hmm. have no purpose to serve. What else is left to do then but to return your water to the well? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Basically kill you. How does one become a Reverend Mother? You're afraid. The Reverend Mother is a task with holding the memories of all the Reverend Mothers that came before them, so I'll be given centuries of pain and sorrow. <laughs> Southern tribes believe the Messiah will come to deliver us from evil. You don't believe in the Lusan al -Jai. We believe in Fremen. Bilal Kaisa. For sure. For sure. Because the... The way they're bowing and praying, though, it looks Islamic, bowing towards Mecca. This is interesting because I, I just figured they were all on one front. But, you know, the deeper we go into this world, we're seeing even in the Fremen that they're very diverse. I mean, wow. Like, it's like the novel is opening up wider. Okay. And you keep pushing it toward my lips. What is it? Whoa. Okay. She's got that same power that uh, her son has. Hey, now don't kill his mom. Uh oh. So that is like his sister now. Unborn sister. She had the beak. It's no miracle. My mother was trained to do that. I'm not the Mahdi. The Dainesha. As written. Okay, well, maybe. So these advanced humans can sense the feelings of a embryo fetus. Oh, here is a tent. And enough food. I want you to cross that small egg and come back. 
beware of the trapdoor spiders. Centipedes are very nasty, not the big ones, they are harmless, but the little ones you have to worry about. Don't ever, ever listen to the Chinese desert spirits. They whisper at night. Thank you. <laughs> but it's true. Don't listen to them. <laughs> it is true, though. See this on the big screen, man. This reminds me of Lawrence of Arabia, except for the running and his <laughs> clear nighty. You can't walk like a drunk lizard. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good so far. Yeah, well, you're not even in worm territory yet. You have to break up the rhythm. <laughs> it's like Fred Astaire out here. <laughs> you know, I'm the only one who believes you're going to make it until summer. Everyone else thinks you won't make it to me. Summer? Man. It's not summer? You don't hear a thing right now. Stop looking at me like that. I'm afraid. Looks like the sand crawler from Star Wars. I love how everything just looks so organic. You know, like, you get tired of seeing these sci-fi movies where alien worlds, ships, and technology look like, you know, made by Steve Jobs. That's what that was. Okay, so they were breathing. Okay. Wow. I do wonder though, like how much of this is lifted from the book and how much it is how much of it is the production design, illustrators, all of that cinematographers of the movie that came up with the look. Oh, yeah, that's that's still pretty much like Earth Tech. I mean, if, if you can tell it, it's descended. You could see the seeds of his design. Charlie! Oh, oh, well, that worked. That works too. Oh, reload. Now ain't the time. It really ain't the time. I know that. What do you think I'm trying to do? I'm triggering. On my signal. Oh, shit! <laughs> Shoot, girl. I love the use of silence in this film, too. Even in the action scenes. There's like bombastic soundtrack and then perfect silence at the right moments. Who taught you to fight like that? My old masters. We've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. My family's been fighting them for centuries. I know everything about them, their habits, their ways of thinking. You know everything about the desert. You harness the very power of it. We can stop them together, bury them in the sand where they belong. Bilal Kairat is still there. I see strength in you. Usahim Uzla. Kericha Jubai Bitsle. So this must be like their mythology or history or mytho history. How do you call the uh, the small desert mouse again? Wadib is wise. In the ways of the desert, oh, creates his own water. That is a powerful thing. Even though this is a different planet, in a different culture, I've been told that there are seeds within humanity that remain even centuries and thousands of years in the future where this takes place. And I see a lot of Arabic feel and culture 
to this world. I remember when I was visiting Morocco and I bought some uh, Algon oil from a, a, a shopkeeper. And when I did, he kissed me on both cheeks and he grabbed me and said to everyone, this is my son. Hey, sugar! Huh, that's so cool. That's interesting though. I mean, since they're, they are making parallels between him and the Messiah in Christianity and, and who we believe in, Jesus. It's amazing that he connected with his believers in such a dynamic, intimate way that no one else was doing at the time. And no one expected a Messiah, a man of war to do, right? Fishing together with his disciples, washing their feet, right? Um, eating with them, laughing with them, going to weddings with them. Beautiful. Where are you from? Nothing beats Before that day, opening from, from the sky. first dude. Where a castle stands on a cliff, high above the sea. He died there, his name was Jabara. He died there? Yeah, go swimming. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe you. That's so interesting, wow. She wouldn't even know what swimming is. Say hi, yeah. Hmm. What does that mean? It means desert spring. I love it. Oh, I hate it. From some stupid prophecy. Well, you are quite lovely looking young lady, so I would say that you are Desert Spring. Maybe you could be from it. Maybe I'll show you the way. Just don't die like the other person that said that he would show him the way. Kiss amongst the golden dunes of Arrakis. That would be like the way it faded out to black. That would be like the classic David Lean intermission time you know okay war montage time time is a passing and love is a blooming that is just weird i'm sorry those ships i'm not even gonna get into what that looks like but bremen attacks do you know what it means if you fail the emperor oh. would take spies what does this dude do? Like, he spends so much time under that stuff. What is he doing down there? And I still don't quite get why he's big like that. Are, are they the Harkonnen? I don't know much about them, but they, I know that they are a branch of humanity. All of these people are, right? In the future, in the far future. Tell me, what was it about? Nothing's clear. It's only fragments. I'm in the South, and I triggered the Holy War. Millions and millions of people starving to death because of me. That was harsh. Be simple. Be direct. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Javier Bardem. <laughs> I should not feel proud of that. It took me too long. They all look big to me. I don't know how big it's supposed to be. So how are you... How are you supposed to get off of this thing? So once again, I ask, how are you supposed to get off of that thing? They will protect him when he comes. Why am I getting like ominous tones? Yet we have a penny Jesuit among us. 
that in the frame because I just can't think of one. And there is there is a book after this, right? Dune Messiah. So I assume that that would be where he really steps up to take on the whole Messiah attitude identity seriously. Or maybe towards the end of this movie. She says she can tell when you lie. Tell her that's because our mother keeps spreading dangerous tales. What does she say now? She says you're blinded by love. And she reminds you that you must reserve your hand for the most acute alliance. It'd be funny if, like, the, the daughter wasn't saying any of this. It was just the mom. What your people did to this world is heartbreaking. We gave them something to hope for. That's not hope! That, that all, then they almost made me jump. He's been whispering the whole movie. That's good. That's the director's choice, right? It really does startle you and, and drive home the impact of what he's feeling when he's been whispering the whole film up until now. So I like that, that, you know, I read an article, something where the director was talking about that he relies more on visual cues and, and scope rather than dialogue. Oh. You should not leave the security perimeter. Security perimeter? The Fremen demon might be with them. I hope so. Is that the guy he bashed before? Or are they all clones that look the same? Uh, I can say clearly now, without hesitation, I do not like the Harkonnen stick. Oh. I'm in range. Range open. When I say I don't like it, I mean, it makes me feel uneasy, the design of it. But I like that, that the director chose to Delta, 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 Delta. design their technology that way. I think it's just, it's, it's intended to be unsettling. It's like Dragonfly, that. I've lost them. Dude is under a lot of pressure, but he seems to be a jerk anyway. Mudeem! Show yourself! <laughs> Ninja turtles in the sand dunes of Arrakis. <laughs> Something about the way he turned around and started running just cracks me up. Now you're running. Breaking folks next. His head looks like he's been blading. What the pro wrestlers do. Oh! Oh no. Oh, is that the girl? Not the first time we've had frictions with the Fremen. No, no, it's magnitude. He's very un Christopher Walken. If this Mardib is a religious figure, we can't use direct force. Repression only makes a religion flourish. You underestimate my Sadaka. You underestimate the power of faith. That is what happened with Christianity. The Romans tried to squash it. It grew, it grew. Publius Cornelius Tacitus, the great historian who, you know, is a great source outside of the Bible for corroborating the events of Jesus' death, crucifixion. If you want to look that up online, the annals that he writes about Christus suffering the extreme penalty under one of our procurators, Pontius Pilatus. And he says, and a great superstition, a most troublesome superstition soon exploded and even found its way out to Rome. He said, where all things perverse, and, you know, find their way and have their hold. But we have it in check for the moment. Paul is alive. He likely knows the truth. And should the great houses learn that your father was behind the liquidation of the Atreides, your father will face war and lose the throne. Then what hope is there? Hope? We are Bene Gesserit. We don't hope. 
and clan. The Baron's youngest nephew, Fade Rotha Harkonnen, will inherit Iraq. He's psychotic. That's irrelevant. <laughs> His always is. So 10,000 years in the future and, and humans have not learned their lesson yet. Question is, is, it, is he any worse than... Uh, you like to question me, my darling? Well, a new place for this very special day. Got a Texan accent, 10,000 years in the future. Well, there was a Duncan Idaho in the last one. My God. Well, it's the tip. Should be sharper. Come. I won't die like a fool. Show me now. There's no drugs for you today, Atreides. Hmm. They have some Atreides as prisoners, eh? So is this what a black sun does? My God. That's, that's scary looking. Just a whole planet of Caspers. Is that Leia Sedo? Man, they got everybody in this, huh? Just to watch our prospect rescue the white Lady Fenring. No fear. These fights are off the show. So it's like ancient Rome with a bit of opera mixed in with those glasses. <laughs> now that's just my boy. I just love that. It's like he's saying, you're the psychotic. Now, come on now. That's 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 bogus. Come on. So they gave him the force field, and they have these Atreides who are probably malnourished, have been eating, been prisoner, <laughs> not getting any sleep. That's so bogus, man. Yeah. Oh, he's enjoying this. Show me who you are. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Still a psycho, but there we go. There he is. There he is. That's the psycho. I raised. What in the world? They remind me of uh, Xenomorphs from Alien. Oh, well, I know. Oh, well, I know this actor. Like, so I knew he was gonna last because you don't have him in here just for. Uh, oh, okay. So we got our bad guy. Our bad guy amongst bad guys. The physical bad guy, the one that I can foresee Paul would have to fight. He's like the Darth Maul to, what, what is the guy's name, uh, Darth Sidious. You tried to kill me. This morning you were a playboy. Tonight, you're a hero. My gift to you. I ought to drown you in that tub. Herakis. What about Rabba? He has failed to protect spice production. He's a spice. I'll make you emperor. We'll take a silk first. Who will sit on the throne? Fade rolls off. Arcanine. Hey guys, stay tuned for part two of Dune 2 coming very soon.